We are joined by Dr. Trudy Pieper from Phoenix Wellness Center, making the trip up to Lima once again. Trudy, thank you for joining us here to, to talk about a topic that's near and dear to your heart, heart autism. Yes, it is. Um, it's always exciting to be here. Um, autism is something that's, as you've mentioned, is very special to me. Um, I raised a child with autism. Mm -hmm. uh, he's now 40 and doing very well, but through the years to watch uh, how he's progressed and how far we've come with being able to help children with our autism and now adults, it's been very important. And that's what I love, the, the CAM treatment, it is for complementary and alternative medicine that can help treat overall health and potential behavioral problems as well. Uh, there's, there's so many different things we can help our children with autism, uh, one, one of which is dietary differences, things we can change dietary. Right, and with CAM, it, it's great because it, it complements uh, medicine today. Yeah. And probably almost 90% of parents who have children with autism have found that one of the complementary or alternative treatments really helps. And, and as you mentioned, um, diet is a huge one. Uh, this, there's a recent study that came out in February that focused on teenagers with autism. Okay and found that they were in the hospital emergency rooms four times more wow. than their peers. Hmm. And uh, the study uh, done at Penn State University found uh, that maybe prevention is not being used as a tool to help these kids, and that it's easier to run them to the emergency room than think about how could we prevent some of the symptomatic problems that they're having. Yeah. And diet is one of those things that makes a huge difference. Uh, in particular, I think, uh, I know he's with my own son and seeing a lot of my patients with autism, mm -hmm. sugar. Now, oh, that's yeah. for all kids. I know with your kids. Yeah, you're right about that. Do you notice a difference when they're <laughs> on a sugar high? Right away. <laughs> yeah. Well, and with autism kids, it's even more pronounced. Huh. So there's a fluctuation between overstimulation from the sugar, which then makes them more irrational, uh, stronger willed, more behavior problems, which will end them up in the ER. And then the other thing is, of course, what happens after they've been eating all the sugar and they don't have it? Yeah. Their blood sugar drops. Crash. Yeah. There's a crash, and that could cause dizziness and foggy thinking, mm -hmm. and they can't think clearly, and they're upset and more grumpy, and those will also end up. So by restricting sugar in the first place and making sure that if your child has autism that they're very limited amounts, um, even during special holidays like the Easter season where they right. and we're coming up on the holidays throughout the year that we you know oh it's a treat well sometimes that'll end up causing you to have a, a trip to the emergency room. So sugar is a universal one what are some other things that you know we might need to test out and say this this could or could not affect our children? Well another big one is gluten okay. and almost all um, kids with autism um, have a gluten insensitivity. Okay. And it's one of those things you need to trial and error and test yeah. and see. But they find that after they eat gluten, there is a, they find a stronger behavioral uh, tendencies. Oh, wow. So they're going to react more strongly because of the gluten in their system. Mm -hmm. Another big one um, is dairy or cow's milk. Okay. Uh, it also it contains a, a protein called A1 um, casein. And that will also trigger a major behavioral issues oh, wow. in children. Okay. So watching that, also the cow milk also causes constipation. And probably the number one problem for autism or kids with ADD or ADHD, mm -hmm. that why they're more angry or more mean or upset or harder to discipline is because they're constipated. It's the oh. number one problem with autism kids is really? constipation. And I find almost universally it is dairy is the issue. Because okay. today we put cheese on everything. We do. It's, it's just a cheese world and that's dairy and that's a problem for them. Huh. Um, and a couple other things though, and, and this not only is for autism kids, but I think for everyone, okay. kind of like the sugar, yeah. are the, the food additives and colors. Oh, yeah. So food dye, red number three, <laughs> nobody should have that. Why is this even in existence? <laughs> yeah, That's I what I want to know. Why do we care that something's red? <laughs> and, you know, very red. <laughs> And so naturally red. <laughs> uh, naturally red. What in nature is red or blue that you eat? Right. So putting those, t and, and kids with autism are so sensitive to chemicals. Mm. And so you put that in their food and they get that and that overstimulates them again. Aggressive behavior could be traced many times to different um, additives in processed foods okay. with that.
And one that's kind of un uh, unique and unusual, I think, that most people don't think about, finally, with, with diet, and all these are mm -hmm. avoidances, things right. you need to avoid, would be soy. Oh, really? And you wouldn't think of that. You no. think it's a, it's a bean, and right. it's sure lentil, and it should be very healthy, healthy. But it has something called phytic acid in it, and it actually aggravates the lining okay. of the colon. And in, again, they're so sensitive. Anything that is aggravating or irritating that is going to cause them to be a little more irritated gotcha. and a little more upset. Um, eventually, causes leaky gut, which then causes some more autoimmune problems, which could cause pain like arthritis or okay. fibromyalgia. So just avoiding soy is just a good idea. Okay. There's also some supplements that we can touch on, and we always want to remind you to talk to your doctor before changing your child's treatment, diet, or lifestyle. We want you to work in partnership with the doctor that's already working with your child or, or your uh, student with autism. But there are some nice supplements that we see some good effects from. Absolutely. You know, the autism has been around. The first diagnosed case was in 1938. Mm -hmm. And since then, we still have not really discovered the cause of autism, you know, whether it's environmental, uh, which I tend to lean towards, um, or genetic. Okay. We do know 80% um, of our boys who are affected. Wow. Yeah, 80% are boys mm. that are affected with that. But uh, with that, we do know there are special herbs and supplements that really make a huge difference mm. in their life. So for the number one thing that I will put my autism kids on, first and foremost, is something with EPA and DHEA or fish oil. Okay. It's good essential fatty acids. Those omega-3s will go in and our brains are fueled by omega-3 fatty acids. Mm. That's the fuel that makes us think. So if we want the brain to be processing the best we possibly can, you put them on some omega-3s and even little ones, they make gummies now that have omega-3s in them. The quickest difference I see is when they're on omega-3s. Okay. As far as behavior, um, attitude, learning, it affects all of those things. It's just critical for brain function. Um, it also reduces a lot of their symptoms and improves learning, particularly in focus and attention. Um, next, are, uh, we've talked a little bit about the digestion, mm -hmm. uh, how leaky gut, how soy, cheese makes a big difference, digestive enzymes. Oh. Something as simple as some papaya or mint have bromine in them and if taken with meals. Uh, again, they're chewable, available for all, all ages of children. will help them make sure they're absor absorbing all their nutrients in their body that they need. And we've seen kids who prefer not to do, you know, to eat the good things, but when they do, if they're getting all the nutrients, then they, we know they're going to do a better job with their learning. Sure. Um, vitamin D, everybody in the world is yes. vitamin D. At least in the United States, we're all vitamin D deficient. Yeah. Um, and I just read a study out from the uh, Council on Vitamin D, which I didn't even know there was a Council on Vitamin D, but there is something for everybody. Uh, they have a foundation, and they've done uh, extensive studies and found that their recommendation that is everybody takes 5,000 IUs of vitamin D for three months and then have blood work done to test to where you are. But uh, I think it's because we're inside more. Right. Kids, especially these teenage group that we're talking about, mm -hmm. are on electronic devices yeah. indoors and they're not getting that vitamin D. Well, without vitamin D, one of the rain, main causes of seasonal affective disorder, sad, where you feel mm -hmm. so sad and depressed and unhappy, is not enough vitamin D. So you put having seasonal affective disorder on top of wow. um, all the issues with autism, you know, uh, vitamin D would be very critical. Some great tips here from Dr. Trudy Pieper. Uh, essential oils, uh, another thing that we can add into our, our repertoire. Well, it's very easy. Today, essential oils are available, and more and more people are, are, are learning about them. Right. Um, I find it's just easy to take essential oil, um, put mix it with a carrier oil with just like a little olive oil. Sure. Usually it's like a, a 10 to 1 ratio, one drop of the essential oil to 10 drops of a carrier. Okay. And you can pretty much rub that any place you can hold, get a hold of that child onto their body and it's going to be fine. Bottoms of the feet are good. Yeah. Um, but we found lavender is very calming. Okay. Frankincense actually helps the neurological um, part of the brain and uh, will help them with the development and thinking process. Okay. So that's frankincense, which is biblical. Very. And uh, one of my favorites for focus and attention is grapefruit oil. Oh, really? So sometimes if you can take a little grapefruit oil and even put it on their clothing, on the collar mm -hmm. of their clothing when they go to school, it will help them stay more focused at school. All right, good tips for uh, helping our children with autism. Dr. Trudy Pieper, you can see her office there in Johnstown, Ohio, the Phoenix Wellness Center. And you can see her online at phoenixwellnessforyou.com. Thanks so much for your time here on Faith and Friends.